Hey everybody, it's Joe. I'm the 3D printing professor and a couple of years back I invented Print-a-Blocks. Here's a bigger one that looks better on camera. Print-a-Blocks are actually a fairly cool idea. They're, they're things that interconnect with a little connector right there so they just snap in very satisfyingly and you can use them to build in all six directions the whole 3d prints it's specifically made for fdm 3d printing so that these holes print up down left right no matter which direction you throw them they work and i have wanted to for a while kind of share with you the idea about about where this came from a lot of people think that it's it's just a lego thing lego tried taking down my designs and i was like i'll show them but not really. Uh, the truth is, this had been brewing for a long time in my mind, and I wanted to show you some of the thoughts that went into it. So let's jump over to Thingiverse 2011. Tony Buser releases his, uh, he just called them pin connectors, and it's a very, very simple idea. It's It's a little pin, uh, it's a little hole that goes with the pin, and the pin just kind of snaps into the hole, and it's it's kind of a tough fit, especially since these were designed for ABS. Uh, but they could be printed laying down or or standing up, and, and and once you put them in, they're very you know they hinge. They're a hinge pin, which is very cool, and it's very satisfying and fun to play with these these little hinges. And if you take a look at the remixes, look at that, 109 remixes on Thingiverse. And these pins are in everything on Thingiverse, especially old things on Thingiverse. But people were using these pins to connect just everything. It didn't matter that they were spinny and that they didn't necessarily... In fact, some people used that to their advantages, like these, these cube gears and the cube hearts over here and stuff like that. These gears, I, I swear, they showed up in so many things. And in fact, this isn't even the whole one because Tony Buser also remixed them, made a robot kit, and that one got even more remixes. In fact, one of the things that I designed even before I had a 3D printer had these pins in them. This is a print. You know what? I never printed this. I designed this eight years ago and didn't print it. But I was able to use Tony Buser's pins to do it and his robot kit. So these pins, I think, if you were in 3D printing in the early days, you encountered these pins. You know these pins. And so it's not surprising that they are kind of the genesis of what happened with, with printer blocks. But it's not just these pins. There's also other interconnecting systems like OpenForge. OpenForge is a RPG tile set that you can 3D print, and it has these little interconnecting pins that snap things together. Now, OpenForge was designed, you, you see this pin, it doesn't pivot. It was designed to 3D print just straight, flat onto the bed. And by doing so, taking advantage of the layers that 3D prints print in to allow them to flex. While Tony Buser's pins could print vertically, uh, it generally speaking wasn't considered a good idea because you were going with the grain of the layers and they would snap every once in a while. So it was, con it was considered a good idea to print his pins that laid down on the bed so that they their flex went with the layers. The holes that are designed here are pretty much designed to only print flat. They take advantage of bridging to work. If you turn them sideways, they, they probably would still work, but not work as well. So I made a little demonstration here to show how simple the idea of Tony Buser's pins are. They're basically just a cylinder, which you, you know, kind of bulge the top and bottom of. And then you punch a hole in it. That way, the thickness of the walls are more or less the same, especially down here in the cylinder of it. And then you cut a slit in the side. And you can vary the width of that slit to give it more or less flex, depending on the material that you're using. And then just for a finishing touch, cut off the top and the bottom so it can lay down and print flat onto the ground. Now the hole 
basically the same idea. Just take a cylindrical hole that's slightly bigger than the, the pin and uh, give it a little bulge right there. Pop, there we go. And then the idea here is, let's see if I can, I made an animation, let's see how this works. So the pin comes in now and here we go. It just kind of has to flex a little bit and then snap into the hole. How cool was that? I'm pretty pleased that that worked out. So these were the thoughts that were in my head as I started working on printer block. And I had some design requirements for myself as I started. First of all, I, I knew that I wanted the side of a regular size printer block to be only about 16 millimeters. I figured that was big enough to be handled by big and small hands, but not so big that they took forever to print so that you could be like, oh, yeah, this is easy. I'll just run off a couple of printer blocks. I also knew early on that I wanted the hole for these connectors to work regardless of whether the connector went in one direction or another. I wasn't going to do the pivoty hole of the Tony Buser connectors. I was going to do a hole that wouldn't slip and move, that would hold things in place. But I also knew that that meant I was probably going to have to turn the hole 45 degrees. So whatever I did to one axis on this hole, I would have to do to the other one. But by turning it 45 degrees, I could take advantage of the you know, 45 degree overhang rule of designing for 3D printing. But then I also had to think about the internal geometry if it were printed vertically and make sure that none of the ridges inside of it were too, too high or too low and that they'd all work together that way. So with that in mind, I kind of started to think about the printer blocks. And here is a, another example here. This is my 16 millimeter cube. Keeping in mind that I was going to be putting holes on the top, bottom, and side, I realized that I really only had this kind of pyramid of space to put the hole in. And since I was going to turn the hole 45 degrees, I had to think about where that hole would intersect this pyramid here. I ended up with a hole only about that big on the side. And, and I was able to measure that and figure out exactly how big it is. Let me show you if I go to wireframe mode, you'll see that hole. It touches right up to the edge of the pyramid, but because it's diagonal, it looks like there's a lot of wasted space in there, but there really isn't. This is, this is the exact size. But now that I have that hole, I could create a connector. I could have the dimensions of the connector figured out. Now this connector, I, I kind of had this shape in my mind, and this was kind of a, a modification of Tony Buser's idea, but again, not designed to be round, designed to be flat. And instead of just having a straight hole in it like this, I decided to put a little, a little bend or a jog in it. That way, I could make other versions of this that were thinner for more rigid materials to be able to flex, or I could make it thicker for softer materials and I have learned since then another clever way to make connectors of any size, but I'll share that with you in the future. But now I have the approximate size of my pin and I have the approximate size of my hole and this pin will be able to go in one way or the other way and work just fine. And this whole thing becomes the basis for my interconnecting block system. But as they say, the devil's in the details. And it's, it's that last little bit of design, making this all actually work together, that proved to be one of the most challenging parts. So let me jump back into Blender. And here I've got my proto connector and a hole cut out of a, a diagonal block, just so that you guys can see the hole. I rotated the block diagonally and just slid it off. This is the hole that it will connect into, and, and right now it'll connect in there just fine, but there's nothing holding it in place. Fair enough. So first thing I have to do is I have to take this block and I have to put some ridges around it. But remember, these ridges are not just on the side, they're on the top and bottom as well. Top and bottom from this orientation, but turn it 45 degrees. You get the idea. Now if I slide this in, it will snap in place and be held in place by those ridges fairly well. But there's a problem because now if I move this out and rotate it 90 degrees in the X so that it's standing up like this, if I move it in here, yeah, it snaps this way, but now those ridges are in the way 
of of the block it can't go in this way so how do i solve this problem well there's a couple of options that i could do first of all i could uh maybe put some ridges in the block i could put some notches out of the top and bottom and that might work except that that presents a new problem because now the block would need to flex in two dimensions in order to work which isn't impossible people have done it but it would mean that this block this this little proto block wouldn't print without support so i went with a simpler solution i just made it a little bit thinner and in so doing it could slide in without problem but this presents another problem because this gap on the top and the bottom here means that it would wiggle a little bit in its hole and i didn't want that so the next thing i had to do was i had to modify the hole so that it had some nubs on it boop, that held the block in place so now the block is held in place this way but we have a new problem let's pull the block out rotate it 90 degrees in the x pop it in and see oh this side is hitting those nubs so what do we do now well now we modify the block if i come into the block a little bit and let's let's add some loop cuts here uh, maybe some more loop cuts actually let's just scale those into z and then we'll add some more loop cuts here let's just grab these faces along here and scale them into y to flatten them out and then let's move them in just a little bit and i'm gonna i'm gonna scale them up just a little bit so that it's still 3d prints flat i gotta look for that 45 degree angle there but i think that will more or less work and now the pins are out of the way or the the pin doesn't get in the way of the nubs but the nubs still work from both directions it still snaps in and there we go we more or less have the printer block connector at this point but you can see how trying to solve one problem created another problem that needed another modification and this is not the entire printer block block you might notice that printer blocks have a hole in them and that was because when i printed it out i ran into the problem of these are so small and they snap in I also should mention, instead of having the Tony Buser connector with a long pin that it snapped in, I just wanted a, a tiny nub in here so that it would snap in and snap out a lot easier than the Tony Buser connectors. But they weren't snapping out as easily. I still needed pliers or something to pull them out, needle nose pliers. I kind of solved this problem by adding a kind of cylinder in here, rotate it in the X 90 degrees, and then I'm actually going to stretch it out a little bit so that this hole can be accessed while it's snapped in. But yeah, take these, use a little uh, bool tool to difference it out. And boom, that hole is big enough that you could slide a paper clip in there and pop it out. But generally speaking, I still go with pliers, but I wanted that to be an option. But with that in place, now we have the completed printer block and the connector that you can more easily than the Tony Buser connectors at least pop out and pop back in and it snaps satisfyingly and you can see that ridge down the side of it that enables it to stay out of the way of the nubs that are holding it from wiggling side to side it, it works it works incredibly well and it has been the basis for so many things after that not just modifications on the base blocks but decorative blocks for making mechs and robots or articulated blocks that are put into making animals and beasts and there are more coming in the future like spaceships but right now my big project is electro blocks where you take common electrical components and have these little print a block shells for them so that you can put them in and quickly snap things together 
prototype it quickly or not even prototype if you wanted to you could call this the final build just maybe print some panels on the side to hold everything together and boom you've got a finished build i'm going to be doing some videos about these in the near future but if you want to check them out they are currently available for download anywhere that I upload 3D models. And you can even start putting them together. There are instructions for them. I'm documenting the whole process. But like I said, the videos for these are also coming soon. So I hope you're excited about that. I'm excited to share them with you. And I'm excited for more incredible developments in Printablock. And I hope partially that this video has demystified printer blocks for you so if you say you know what i need a connector system well that connector system is out there for free to download right now so that you can start using them yourself and i did mention that you know flex is an important part of it so that connector if you scale it up too big doesn't work because it changes the the size of the flex but i got around that when i printed these eight times bigger printer blocks by just printing my connector with no top or bottom layer, no infill, and then I could control the number of shells that I put on it to make it so that it flexed exactly the right amount for this material, whatever that material happens to be for you. I'm still working on a design that works for resin 3D printers, and I'm still want to play with things like all oh, flexible filaments ninja flex and tpu and the like and see how those work there's still more development to come with printer blocks but i'm super excited about what has happened so far and i'm super excited oh that just sounds so good for the future of these and i hope you are too so thank you very much for watching while you're checking out this cool thing posted by one of you on the what you making channel on my discord why don't you open up the cards and see what deep dive into the topics of this video you can do. And this is really cool. Yeah, I really enjoy it when people connect with me on social media. That's why I've got links to all the socials in the description and I hope you'll check them out. I've also got a Patreon which you can check out here and I'll tell you a little secret about the suggested videos. This is the one that YouTube thinks that you'll like. This is the one, though, that I think you'll like. Which one of us is right? Only one way to know for sure. Gotta watch them both. And remember, safety first, because I really do care about you. And see you next time.